Day four of the European Youth Olympic Festival in Utrecht with the best of European athletes on show. All nine sports in action. In cycling, it's the road race. 55 kilometers for girls, 80 kilometers for boys. In tennis, most of the top seeds have been eliminated. We're heading towards the final. More success for the Netherlands in judo. The semi-finals of volleyball, basketball and handball. In swimming, the Russian Openesheva can win a fifth and sixth gold medal. In gymnastics, it's the boys and girls all-round events. And in athletics, the 110 metre hurdles. A magnificent sunny day in Lint, Utrecht for the road race for the girls. Seven laps of an eight kilometre course, in all a 55 kilometre challenge. Time trialist Lisa Morzenti, part of the Italian team, the Dutch in their familiar orange, and of course the Swedes in yellow and blue looking very relaxed. Off and running, and the Swedes immediately out in front, but overall a very tightly packed peloton. Really nothing in it for the first few kilometres. Riders jockeying, team tactics coming into play now. Kazoot, the local Dutch rider, struggling at the back of the field. Certainly not what the locals wanted to see. The first serious attack came from the Norwegian rider, Marta Carlsen. Pulling away from the peloton, the chasing pack went after her. First of all, it was the Irish lady, Emily Birchall, but she was burnt in a very short time. It was left to the Italian, Silvia Persico. Quickly swallowing up the leader, and going out to the pointy end herself. It's becoming very obvious that the Italian team tactics are working. In the final stages, they're dictating the tempo, allowing the scene for Martina Alzini, the lead rider for Italy, to go to the front. She's challenged by two British riders. It's Broughton and Garner. Charlotte Broughton, the sister of Lucy Garner, the former Junior World Championship, right on the tail of the Italian, but it's Italy across the line first. Goal to Martina Alzini. A magnificent team ride. The tactics are great because uh, uh, they helped me uh, for uh, the final sprint. So um, I have uh, the best team of Europe and maybe in the world. But you finished it as well? Yeah, I was. Well, I, I'm very well. They are. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. The men's road race. It's getting later in the afternoon, the mercury rising high. 10 laps of an 8km course, 80km. The endurance test begins. And in very little time, it's the Swiss rider, Gino Maida. Making his way to the front, treating it like it's a sprint. Look at him putting in big time. Trying to put as much distance between him and the peloton as soon as possible. With only a few laps down, he had opened up a big lead. The question on everyone's mind was, could he maintain this pace? The peloton now working hard to reel him in. Slowly but surely, they have him in their sights. Gino Maida still pedalling hard. Unfortunately, a different story for one of the Dutch riders. Bram Velten, a technical problem and left alone to sort things out. losing plenty of time, his hopes look to be dashed. The peloton eventually reeling in Maida and left to sort out its own devices. Another breakaway, this time it's from French rider Ronan Vivier. Leo Appelt, the man who had performed so well in the time trial, and local boy Pascal Ankhorn took out after him. After reeling him in, they started to pull away themselves. Back at the peloton, the German cyclists were doing their job, slowing things down. A superb tactical effort from the German side. The leaders knew they had this one between them. It was up to them to fight it out for the gold. 
Ankhorn and Appholt. In the sprint for the line, Ankhorn made his run a little early. Appelt sitting nicely just in behind him, waiting to make his move and swooping, making it look easy in the end. The man who scored silver in the time trial pulled away in the road race to score gold for Germany. Silver to Pascal Ankhorn for the Netherlands and third Belarus through Ilga Vulkov. Certainly a big future in cycling. Appelt, narrowly beaten in the time trial, convincing in the road race. I was happy with a uh, silver in time trail and today I uh, can't believe it. But it was very nervous in the, in the peloton? Yes, very nervous and much, uh, many crashes and I'm happy too. In gymnastics, both boys and girls were vying for medals in the individual overall event. The Netherlands representative in the boys was Frank Rijken in action here on the high bar. He put in a commendable display, notching a score of 13.6, making him third in the apparatus. In the end, though, he had to be happy with eighth place overall. Ivan Stretovich won the bronze. The Russian was in superb form, particularly on the high bar. But a score of 13.85 on the rings helped him pull ahead of Belgian Florian Landut. The battle for gold was between two Brits who were also standout performers in the team's competition on Tuesday, Bryn Bevan and Niall Wilson. They were clearly ahead of their opposition. It was soon evident that Bevan was the stronger of the two, but Wilson's routine on the even bars gave him some sort of hope. Full of grace and precision, but not the best of dismounts. Great Britain, gold and silver, Russia bronze. In the women's section, the British girls were hoping to add to their medal haul. Obviously inspired by their male counterparts, Maisha Mattis, a little shaky on the balance beam, but still doing enough to pick up bronze. Just 0.1 of a point separated the top three play skaters in this individual challenge. Also in the frame were Maria Karankova of Russia and Germany's Kim Yanis. Karankova was brilliant in the floor exercises. She was almost matched by the German. It was going right down to the wire. In the end, both were locked on 54.950 points and Karen Kova winning on a count back based on the degree of difficulty in execution. Russia, Germany, Great Britain. Perfect tennis weather for the girls' semi-finals and for the first time we see the judges and ball boys put in an appearance. Serving in the blue is Teresa Mihailakova. She's number two seed in this, has progressed fairly easily to this stage. She's up against Daria Krushkova of Russia. Some fantastic rallies in this game. As we've seen, Mikhail Kova not scared to charge the net and play a volley game. On that occasion, it paid dividends. Mikhail Kova went on to win the first set, 7-5. Seemingly in control, but Krushkova wasn't done yet. Fighting back in the second to win 6-4. One apiece. The third and deciding set. Mihaila Kova serving. And what an upset. The number two seed is out. Going down in three sets. 5-7, 6-4, 6-2. In the other semi-final, it was another Slovakian. Number eight seed, Victoria Kuzmova. Up against Anastasia Detyuk. Beautiful drop shot there. Kuzmova did well in the doubles with her fellow Slovakian, Mihaila Kova. And in the end, going through to win this one very easily, 7-5, 6-love. 
So in the final, the unseeded Russian Daria Krushkova goes up against the number eight seed Victoria Kuzmova of Slovakia. In the boys' semi-final, it's Matthias Heim in red from Austria up against Riccardo Balzarani of Italy. Heim winning the first set, 6-3, and overall playing a much more proficient game than his Italian opponent. Taking the second, 6-3, and progressing to the final, taking on Marco Osmakic of Switzerland, who earlier defeated Stefanos Tsitsipas of Greece. Semi-final of the men's volleyball, and at times in this match, it really did look like the men against the boys. Poland with a huge height advantage up against the Turks. Beautiful touch there from Alexander. Some tremendous serving also. How did they block that? Using their height once again and again. Lomanski, one of the tallest players in the competition, using his height to advantage. The Turks absolutely rattled, no answer, fouling there and losing this match by three sets to love, Poland looking particularly strong. They'll meet Russia in the final who had to go through an arduous match against Italy. This was a five set thriller, had the crowd on the edge of its seat, 25-19 the first set going to Russia, then the Italians kept hitting back, in the end 15-13, a nail biter, Russia into the final. The Italians heartbroken. So, the big men of Poland facing Russia for the gold, Italy, Turkey for the bronze. The drums beat loudly for the girls of Slovenia as they came up against Germany in the red. That ball just in. Lucky break for the Germans, but it was about the only thing that went their way. Slovenia winning this one easily, three sets to nil. The Netherlands, plenty of home support for them. Orange everywhere in the crowd as they came up against Russia. Lovely setup. And getting onto that one was Jasper. Both teams in superb form in the lead up rounds. This was going to be a fight right down to the wire. The Netherlands taking the first set, 25-21. Serbia in the white with their never say die attitude and ably served by Lozo taking the second. 25-20. The Netherlands unable to keep up with the Serbians. Vinjevici also chipping in with nine points. It's Serbia three sets to one going through to the final. They'll meet Slovenia for the gold, Germany and the Netherlands for the bronze. The 63 kilogram class for girls and the whole stadium could feel that fall. Mellenberg for the Netherlands on top. A tough encounter this one. Neither girl giving an inch. It was cling and tussle for the entire match. A penalty conceded by Gershak of Hungary was enough to give Netherlands the victory. Another gold in judo. Hungary the silver. up to the 70 kilogram class now and it's Scott Chimaro of Germany up against Matic of Croatia and Scott Chimaro holding an early advantage in the blue and getting the gold brown belt toppling the black belt in the 70 kilo class in the men's 73 kilo class Turkey's Arbanoz up against Kira Kozashvili of Georgia and what about that a scramble, a tumble, it's upside down. They're on their feet again. Both men. Really putting in here. Difficult to call which way this is going to go. Some real tactics going on, but what a show of strength. Neither man giving in. Here it is again. Certainly fortunate that neither athlete was injured there. And just when you thought this was going to go the distance, it's an Ipun, the Turk, Abanoz, winning the gold. Silver to Georgia. He's got disappointment written all over him.
getting up in weight now. It's the 81 kilogram class for men. The fight for the bronze medal. The local boy in blue, Frankie De Witt, up against Gregor Kochmut from Slovenia. Kochmut sent crashing to the canvas. Another tight battle here for medals. But in the end, it was the Yuko by De Witt that scored him the bronze. The man in blue, victorious and a fantastic campaign in judo for the home nation. In the final of the 81 kilogram class, it was Beardy Kashvili of Georgia up against Igolnikov of Russia. And he made it look easy. It's gold via that Ippon for Russia. In track and field, the 400 metre girls hurdles and fastest away was on the outside lane, Coralie Gassima of France. But it was soon obvious that the lady in lane four from Slovenia, Anja Simoncic, was looking good. Although showing signs of tiring, she hung in there over the last few hurdles and was able to take the gold in a time of one minute 0.27 seconds. Second home was Peskova of Slovakia and Gassimar picking up the bronze for France. Far from a classic finish, but still doing enough to score the goal for Slovenia. In the boys' discus, it really was a one-man affair. From Hungary, Bence Halash. Ooh, look at that throw, watch out over there. 61.13 metres on his first attempt. Takes a seat and enjoys the rest of the afternoon. Gold for Hungary. Some early nerves in the girls' 100 metre hurdles after a false start. The girls got away cleanly and it was Laura Valletta from France in lane four doing good. But sticking with her in lane three was Chloe Bocan of Belgium. Bocan and Valletta hitting the line. It's France gold for Valletta and silver for Belgium. Bronze for Belarus. In the javelin event for boys, it's Turkey's Amin Onsel. Letting it fly. And that was the best effort of the day. 68.50, almost two metres better than the opposition. Iso Kanta of Finland, the silver, and Guy Lums of Latvia, the bronze. In the boys, 400 metre hurdles. It was heartbreak for Austria. Dominic Hufnagel looked like scoring a start to finish victory, but wilted in the final stages right down the outside. It was Victor Corolla scoring gold for France. Austria had to be content with silver and it was Russia with bronze. In the girls high jump, it was Poland's Paulina Boris with a superior effort Clearing the bar on first attempt at every height, finally winning with 1.79 metres. Nice even start in the boys' 110 metre hurdles. Hard to separate really who's going to come ahead in this one. But lane three, Sebastian Calme just starting to forge ahead. But look down the outside, it's the Spaniard Mendez Garancho. France winning it through Calme, Garancho Silva and Scalvi Bronze for Austria. The girls triple jump final and it's Yanis Esmeralda David. One, two, into the sand pit. Fantastic leap. 12.80 meters gold for France. A fantastic campaign in track and field for the nation. The girls 400 meter freestyle. Lane four, Arena Openi Shaver. Four gold from four events. Could she make it five? It didn't seem to be going according to plan in the opening laps. Spain's Ruiz Bravo had taken an early lead and was pulling away. Yanka Juhas of Hungary and Valeria Timshenko of the Ukraine were also staking their claim. But in the final hundred, it was Openi Shaver motoring away, making it five gold. A tremendous effort. Ruiz Bravo, Spain silver and Timshenko of Ukraine bronze. Men's 200 metre butterfly and the Italian in lane six, Carini, under the water for longest and gaining an early lead. 
However, the Russian, Dmitry Malkov, was attempting to make a race of it. And for the first 150 metres, they were neck and neck. As they turned for the final time, it was Karini surging ahead. The Russian hanging in there, but it's gold to Italy via Karini. Kainigakis of Greece silver and Malkov bronze for Russia. The 4 by 100 metre mixed, and in this one, once again, it's Arena Openisheva. Can she make it six from six? Best away, however, was Duncan Scott of Great Britain. He was giving Great Britain an early lead. The Russians were hanging in there, and the Germans joined the fray also. Katerina Gottfeld keeping the Germans in the race. Norway and France also making a charge. On the final 100, Openisheva in lane four. Pulling away once again and notching gold medal number six. What a games it's been for her, Openi Shaver. A tremendous 2013 games for her in Utrecht. Mmm, gold. In the men's handball semi-final, it was Belarus up against Norway. Belarus unbeaten in Group A. Norway, the great escape artist yesterday. Eric Kopp, eight points for Norway, a very handy game. But Belarus wouldn't go away. Scoring there for the men in green was Maxim Songchuk. Halftime score was 2018. In the end, Norway notching the victory 36-30. Frustration for Belarus, Norway into the final. Once again, Scandinavians figuring in the final, Norway taking on Slovenia, who defeated Sweden 24-23. The bronze Belarus, Sweden. Plenty of support for the Netherlands in their semi-final against Russia. This was expected to be a tight affair with the Netherlands finishing top of their group. What a fantastic goal under pressure from Bone Camp. But the Russians, were always in control of this match. Whack! What a shot from Valentina Venigorova. The Netherlands down 16-5 at halftime, always had their backs to the wall. A steal there. Look at the options for Russia here. And it's Venigorova once again. No stopping her. Russia 38-21 in the final against Denmark. The bronze played out between Germany and the Netherlands. In one half of the women's semi-final, it was Hungary, the winner of Group A, up against the Czech Republic in red, second placed in Group B. Hungary, who were the superior scoring team in the group phase, found themselves on the back foot against the Czech Republic side. Despite some poor shot selection, the Czech Republic side looked good in the paint. Kershevac, round the corner and a wonderful basket. Czech Republic asserting its authority in the dying stages. Look at that drive to the paint. Where was the defense? Fantastic bucket for Matuskova. And it's the Czech Republic pulling off an upset 68-57. In the other match, an upset, France defeating Russia in overtime 73-70. Czech Republic, France in the final. Hungry Russia for the bronze. In the men's section, it was Serbia up against Turkey. Serbia topped their group in Group A, while Turkey finished second in Group B. What a brilliant tournament this has been for Simonic of Serbia. The NBA clubs will be knocking on his door at the end of this tournament. Simonic, totally dominant, using his height and sharp shooting skills to send Serbia into the final in this match. Serbia 73, Turkey 62. In the other semi-final, Croatia defeated Germany 76-70 to advance to the final. The arch enemies going head to head. Serbia, Croatia for the gold, Turkey, Germany for the bronze. Day four, at times it was upside down, all around. The athletes were certainly shaking it. Magnificent competition, but the curtain is almost about to close. The last day, wall-to-wall -wall finals. 